Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. It is Diablo 4 time. Tomorrow we get Season 5, and while it has been really hectic in these last few days to try to get some builds going, because we really had some actual last-minute changes, like Friday at midnight they were penciling in and changing their own patch notes that they already changed the day before, that they released the day before that. So there is going to be a lot of untested stuff because the PTR wasn't quite as successful as the first rollout and a lot of the builds that people are going to recommend are going to have mechanics that have not been like 100% tested but that's, you know, that's just how it's going to roll this season. So I have three builds I want to highlight for you guys. I haven't really picked which one I'm going to play but make sure to check out the videos throughout the day as I will be posting all of those. Maybe I will influence your decisions. If you guys do wish to check out the builds in written form in a little bit more practical detail, I recommend you guys check out the builds on Mobilytics. So Mobilytics is the home of the crypt builds. That's where everything is going to be at. So make sure to check that out. It is going to be in the description for this particular build. And this is a build that you probably haven't heard of before. This is a Necromancer build, Shade Mist Summoner. Now, I have scoured the internet for what people have tried to make work on the PTR. You know, there's a lot of information out there, and somehow no one's actually used this. But it makes sense because when they had Shade Mist on the PTR, it did a flat amount of damage, and it looked good, but it wasn't really that much of a standout. So what changed? Well, Shade Mist was changed just about a day ago, actually. They changed their patch notes, and it is now a different aspect. Your minions deal 25% shadow damage per second to enemies around them. The damage over time lasts for 2-5 to five seconds after leaving the aura. This is actually significant. I want to point out. So that's pretty cool, actually, because, well, you can have a lot of minions, right? Like, you can have four skeletons, three skeleton mages, a golem, and you can increase the count by two of each of your mages and your warriors. But it doesn't stop there. Actually, there is a little bit more. The bone prison has a few sections, I think it's six total sections, and each section of a brown prison is actually a minion. So your bone prison, because you are scaling shade mist damage, is going to spawn like a castle around the mobs that you corpse tendrils, and the bone prison itself will be doing significant damage to the monsters in it. Now, this sounds a little bit experimental, but when you start to number crunch this, it is actually pretty crazy. If you put Shade Mist on your two-hander, and remember, sides have a 0.9 attack speed, and this is doing damage over time based on the damage of the weapon. It has nothing to do with attack speed. 50% of it, of your weapon damage, as an aura, even after the mobs exit the range of your minions, well, you have 12 passive minions and six more with a cooldown. You have a lot of minions. And this actually adds up to be a very large amount of damage. Now, it is untested. The Shade Mist aspect that we had on the PTR, very few people played it. It had a set amount of damage. Um, so there's like a minuscule chance that they reworked it and it does damage just from the player damage like Ring of Mandeln used to. But honestly, it's only Ring of Mandeln that worked that way. I'm hoping Shade Mist works kind of like the Blizzard works from your Skeleton Mages. It doesn't use your damage modifiers. It's the minions that are casting it. So hopefully it works as intended. That's really the only concern for the build. And I'm like 99 to 100 that it will not have that issue. Now, there's a few other interesting mechanics. Speaking of Ring of Mendeln, we have a new Ring of Mendeln. The new Ring of Mendeln has uh, Int, which is good. It has percent damage, which... Okay. And it has minion attack speed, which is fantastic. And 
better, it has plus one to Skeleton Warrior Mastery, Skeleton Mage Mastery, and Golem Mastery. And we're actually using all of those minions. Uh, the effect, we don't really know because when they revealed these new versions of these, um, we just don't really know these values. Uh, and they, they, they did confirm this. This value is not three times lower than this one. They didn't, like, nerf the damage. We just don't know. It might be higher, it might be lower. But we're using Ring of Mandelm because it has really good stats and it gives us plus skills to each of the minions' passives. And unlike Golemancer builds from Season 4, we can't really utilize the Golem skill stacking on the chest. And the reason why we can't utilize that is because Tyriel's Might is insane. They just basically cranked the value on every single stat on this thing. And I, I just, I want to be clear, this item is like the most OP item ever uh, in Season 4. And in Season 5, they like doubled it. Okay, so it's ridiculous. You have to use Tyriel's Might. If you use Tyriel's Might, you can basically ignore just about every other form of survivability. Um, when you get to the higher pit levels, yeah, you just want some basic survivability stuff, and most of that's going to kill you is elemental damage. Tyrael's Might, if you get um, a bunch of rolls on the max resists, can cap out your maximum max resists by itself. Rather good. We have a new aspect called the Aspect of the Great Feast. Now, for a period of about a day and a half, this was at over 100% bonus damage multiplier to everything. And you might think, well, that's kind of a lot, right? Yes. So they changed it one day later. And it doesn't suck. And it's kind of interesting. And uh, I'll, I kind of want to go over that because the, the set of skills here, you probably haven't seen me use this set of skills on a summoner before either. It's like, what's going on? So Aspect of the Great Feast, uh, it's like 45 damage multi is still a lot. Um, but it drains your essence one per every minion that you have. And if you have no minions, you lose seven per second. Now, seven per second is not a lot um, because a lot of the builds that are not minion builds, they usually get some form of regen anyway. So if your regen is like, you know, 25 and then you lose seven, well, that's probably worth using anyway. But if you have 12 minions and at times 18... Well, that's kind of a problem. So the way that this character is designed, the reason why the skills might seem a little bit weird, it's because this build is designed to not have any skills that require any resource. Now, there is a little bit of a downside to this, admittedly. Um, we won't be using, like, Blight, but honestly, I hated using Blight. Uh, we have to use Iron Maiden instead of Decrepify, but Iron Maiden is fantastic. Iron Maiden has uh, a pretty significant healing component, so anything that dies, you heal for 7%. And this is affected by your willpower scaling and your healing received from Gruesome Mending. So it's a lot of healing. You're just constantly going to be healing. And that's pretty important because one of the changes in Season 5 is that they changed the implicits from Scythe, which was life on kill, which is really good, by the way. Um, they changed it, but they changed the summoning damage. So I mean, you know, I mean, I guess I'll take it. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not life on kill. I guess I'll just take a bunch of damage. But yeah, you are not going to have life on kill playing uh, scythe-based minion builds anymore. So that is pretty significant. Another unique that we're using is the God Slayer Crown. This was also reworked. They basically just gave it stats that don't suck. Um, and you know that's that's good enough for a lot of use cases. The effect that triggers is exactly the same as before, uh, but I've never used it on a minion build. So why are we using it on a minion build now? So the Shade Mist, if we go back to it, the damage over time lasts for two to five seconds after leaving the aura. Now, I would probably lean to using the God Slayer Crown anyway. It's just like a good item. But I suspect that Shade Mist will snapshot a higher damage over the duration. So what does that mean for this build? God Slayer Crown has a 12 second cooldown on its effect, and you basically get a massive damage multiplier on a helmet, by the way, which normally doesn't have damage at all, uh, for three seconds. But I believe the way that it will work with Shade Mist is that um, in the last second, when you have the damage bonus, 
that effect is going to keep going for five more seconds because the next effect is going to be like lower damage. I think the lower damage might not overwrite the higher damage because it has a duration after the effect. So I think that Shade Mist um, is like completely insane with the God Slayer Crown effect. And in general, if you spot any other source of kind of like temporary big damage boost, you can kind of cascade that a little bit. So like if you look at God Slayer Crown and it's like three seconds of big damage every 12, it's not bad. But if it's eight seconds of big damage every 12, now we're talking, that's a serious item. Um, I'm also using an aspect I've never used before, uh, the aspect of the damned. So you deal increased shadow damage to enemies afflicted by any curse. Now, this is kind of an interesting one. Um, generally, I haven't played like a full-on shadower. Uh, but here, I think a huge amount of the damage is going to be the shade mist aspect. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes down. The rest is pretty standard to a necromancer and... I imagine that if you're checking out this video, thank you for that. Uh, the intricacies of playing a minion-based necromancers are not unfamiliar to you. Um, but uh, yes, there are going to be a little bit of differences. This is going to be a bit more of like an AFK play style because you're going to do just crazy damage just walking through whatever zone you're walking through. Uh, we're using Blood Golem just because uh, it has the passive damage multiplier. It makes its button heal you. Uh, so you have a lot more healing effects as a result of that. Uh, we are using Shadow Mages. Uh, I wouldn't recommend anything else because the Shadow Mages... We're getting a lot of Shadow Damage, basically. The Shadow Mages are going to not only give you more of a damage multiplier, but they are going to, in addition to having their Shade Mist improved, their auto attack is also Shadow. So that is also improved. It's pretty significant. The Reapers, the spawn corpses, it just can't give these up. Uh, you know, we're kind of on like a corpse spawning diet playing necromancers for whatever reason, so I'm not really sure why that worked out. Skill-wise, it is exactly what you expect. Uh, one point in Blood Mist, we actually don't scale crit, but 10 crit is still some damage. We really shouldn't need the corpses that it leaves behind. A little bit of armor. Bone Prison has a long vulnerable effect, and we also use Corpse Tendrils for its vulnerable effect. There's not a lot of cooldown reduction. Most of the cooldown reduction is for the Golem button. Um, now, you know, you can change up a few things if you like, but yeah, just keep that in mind. And they did nerf the, sh the Blighted aspect so significantly that it's just not really worth using Shadow Blight, in my opinion. We're going to use Kalan's Edict. And the reason why we're going to use Kalan's Edict is because it gives us a massive attack speed boost, which makes us, like, you don't need this attack speed to cap at 100%. But if you noticed, we're not using the attack speed aspect because we don't need to, right? So it's one of those things where um, it's not that powerful of, like, an ultimate passive, but it allows you to put, like, gear stat slots into other areas. The ranks of Skeleton Mage Mastery, I think, are good, uh, but honestly, I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of a luxury, to be honest with you. I think it's kind of a luxury. I wouldn't go too crazy for it, but you can get it on pants and on gloves, if you choose. For Paragons, we are also using a few new uh, glyphs here. Scourge, never used one before. You and your minions deal 10% increased damage to enemies affected by shadow damage over time effects, which is basically now all of the time. So that's pretty convenient. And there is another one here. I kind of forget where I put it because, you know, I had, had like a build-a-thon stream here. Uh, ah, here we go. Darkness Glyph. Okay. So this is also a shadow one. Um, the base bonus just increases your shadow damage. It's not that much, so we're just kind of getting the minimum uh, for the end to activate the bonus. But the bonus is pretty good. Whenever you or your minions deal shadow damage to an enemy, that enemy deals 2% reduced damage up to 10% for 5 seconds. So a little bit of damage, a little bit of survivability, and the rest of the, kind of the pathing is going to be pretty similar to summoner builds that you've seen in the past. There's a lot of reworks in Season 5, but like changing up the locations of paragons and stuff, well, that part is largely the same. So you all have some familiarity with the build if you've played a few of these. Uh, I'm pretty excited to try this one. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards this build, but I haven't really made up my mind. I'll probably make up my mind on the day that Season 5 launches, which is Tuesday. So 
See you guys then, and uh, hope you guys enjoy this video and the next two to follow.